Closure is a word we hear often, but closure doesn't always come for those shattered by violent crimes. Three years after their daughter's violent murder, a Johnson County family is still waiting. For them to heal, it will take a killer who's still out there being brought to justice. In this old Shawnee neighborhood lined with mature trees and lush green lawns are homes filled with memories. This was once home to Tammy Cochran, a mother, a wife, and a popular hairstylist. Today, memories are all her family has after a violent death took Tammy away. She was just a very, very loving person. She was healthy then. This is a good day for Mike and Carol Cochran. They're able to share the memories of their daughter without the tears. Still, it's a far cry from the days of Tammy's happy family and thriving salon. I just enjoyed going over there and getting a haircut, whether I needed one or not, because just the conversations that we had were just wonderful. And that's what I try to think about the most, because the last few years of her life were uh, a whole lot different than that. Something changed, and like so many families, no one saw it coming. We don't know how, but she got involved in drugs and. Her, her family life just flipped upside down. Tammy tried to beat it with the help of her husband and family, but eventually with the drugs winning, Tammy's marriage ended and her risky choices transformed the once happy woman with a bright smile into a troubled shadow of her former self. Two weeks later, I have the Johnson County detectives come to my door and tell me what happened. On the morning of March 5th, 2008, an Olathe Water Department crew found Tammy's horribly burned body near a remote boat ramp. I believe that she was actually transported out there when she was deceased, and then the body was actually burned. Detectives Brian Peters and Pat Foster say this is one of the worst cases they've ever investigated. They followed over 250 leads and interviewed some 100 people, but still no arrests. The fact that there are no suspects comes from the many still unanswered questions about Tammy's murder. She'd been out of touch with her family for about two weeks, and witnesses put her here on Independence Avenue. In fact, the last time police can see that she was alive was at that gas station. Tammy arrived at this convenience store on foot five days before she would turn up dead. In this never-before-released surveillance video, we see Tammy walk in about 10.40 p.m. She bought a cell phone charger, then left on foot. That's the last time she would be seen alive. But what happened over the next five days? And what led to such rage that her killer set her body on fire? I don't think they set out to hurt her, but I think something had happened that set them off. They did something, and then it was, uh-oh. What do we do now? Olathe police believe Tammy's body was dumped overnight by someone familiar with this remote area, and they believe the killer must have told someone by now. People don't keep this to themselves. People brag about things like this. In need of fresh leads, police and Tammy's family hope someone will be motivated by the $18,000 reward and lead them to Tammy's killer. We're looking for that person that, if it's for the, doing it for the right thing or doing it for the money. To be honest, I really don't care why they give us that right tip to send us down the path to to find that right person. Speak up and tell on who did this, and it would give us a little bit of closure. It'll never bring our daughter back. A little bit of closure and an $18,000 reward. It just takes that one tip, that one anonymous phone call. The number, 816-474-TIPS. If you know who killed Tammy Cochran, police want you to call now.